This is the Canon 50mm f1.8 prime lens. This is also known as the Nifty 50 and is the most popular and best selling lens in the world. This is the Yongnuo 50mm f1.8 prime lens. On paper, the same lens, the same focal length, the same wide aperture. But is it any good? Let's find out. Hi, Paul here from Fairly Genius. Now in this video, we're gonna be putting two prime lenses head to head. Now, if you're not familiar with the term prime lens, let me quickly get you up to speed. A prime lens is a lens that can't be adjusted. It has no zoom. So you can't zoom in and out of your subject. With a prime lens, you walk closer to your subject if you want a closer view. And if you want a wider view, you walk backwards. Now, what a prime lens lacks in zoom it more than makes up for generally in aperture. Aperture is the opening in the lens and prime lenses generally have much wider apertures, which is a lower F number. Now a wide aperture is great because it will let in more light than a traditional zoom lens. This means you can shoot better photos in uh, poor light. It will also help to keep your shutter speed up nice and fast. All good things. Plus, and this is the key thing and the reason a lot of people love prime lenses, it will give you a nice blurry background. This is commonly referred to as a shallow depth of field and sometimes people refer to the quality of the blur as bokeh or bokeh, depending on how you want to pronounce it. That is derived from the Japanese word bok, which means blur or quality of blur. Now I get so many people asking me about this lens. Is the Yongnuo lens worth buying? Is it any good? Because it's significantly cheaper than the Canon lens. A uh, quick history lesson. In 1990, Canon released a lens. Here it is. It's the 50mm f1.8 Mark II, often referred to as the Plastic Fantastic. Let's pop this one up here. Um, this lens is Plastic Fantastic because it's plasticky, it's cheaply made, but it's a fantastic lens. It was very, very popular. The newest version is this. This is the 50mm 1.8 STM lens, which is a lot better built. It's got some metal parts in it now. It's got a quieter motor. Let's pop this one down here. The Yongnuo is a direct copy of the original Mark II version of the 50mm. So it's a copy of this lens. Let's put this one about here, okay? Now, you can't buy the old Canon. This one's now been deleted, it's finished, it's gone unless you buy a second hand one. So we're gonna be um, comparing these two. The Yongnuo versus the Canon 50mm f1.8 STM lens. Let's see how they compare. So the first test was to see how well the lenses performed at their maximum aperture, which is f1.8. So I cleared some room on the desk and as a subject to shoot, I grabbed a couple of original 1977 Star Wars figures. So to test sharpness, we're starting with the Canon lens on the front of the camera first, focusing on the figure in the back. The beep you hear is the camera focusing, followed by some more beeps. That's the camera's self timer. That will help to reduce any shake. Now being very careful to remove the lens without moving the camera, and we're gonna now switch the Canon lens for the Yongnuo lens. Again, being very careful not to move the camera. Turn the camera back on, refocus, and take the second photo. Starting with the Canon image, we have a nice shallow depth of field. The image looks pretty good. Comparing this with the image taken with the Yongnuo 50 millimeter, and we see that although the camera settings are the same, strangely, this lens seems to let a bit more light in. The image definitely looks brighter, and actually the focal length looks slightly different. Zooming in, we see that sadly, the Yongnuo lens at f1.8 is giving an image that is really quite out of focus. Comparing this with the Canon 50 millimeter lens, and although slightly better than the Yongnuo lens, a bit disappointing as well at f1.8. So after some disappointing uh, images initially, I thought I'd try it again, this time at f8, which is a smaller aperture. Bigger f number, smaller aperture, greater depth of field, hopefully sharper images. Now shooting f8, the Yongnuo lens on the camera first. Focus. Okay, turn the camera off as before. Take the lens off. Switch back to the Canon 50mm. Again, being very careful not to move the camera. Camera on, focus. 
Let's compare these images. Shooting at f8, we certainly expect a bit more sharpness. Both lenses performing very well here with hardly any difference between the two images. Now, not surprisingly, f8 gave pretty sharp results, but really you buy a nifty 50 to use the aperture wide open. That's the appealing thing about that type of lens. So what I wanted to do was test um, the aperture range again from f1.8 through to f3.5 and um, subject this time this beautiful classic Ensign vintage camera. Now, as before, the image looks pretty soft at f1.8, but by the time we close the aperture down to f2.2, the image looks acceptably sharp. And of course, the smaller the aperture, the more sharpness we'll get. So by the time we get to f3.5, the image looks great. The Young Neuro 50mm lens starts off very, very soft and out of focus. When we get to f2.8, I think we have something of acceptable quality, but it's not until we really get to f2.8 that the lens starts to give us a decent enough image. Now, of course, as well as taking still photos, lots of people like to do videos now with their uh, cameras, uh, myself included. I'm using a Canon 80D to do this video, and it's got a great face tracking feature, which means I can move around and the camera tracks my face and keeps me in focus. So to test how well the Nifty 50s did uh, with this, um, I put the Young Neuro and the Canon lens on my ATD and I simply stood in front of the camera and walked backwards and forwards changing the distance to see how well they coped with adjusting the focus. Uh, the Canon lens performed really well, the STM lens, uh, the STM motor sorry, is very very quiet, it's very quick, did a great job. The Young Neuro lens however really struggled. Um, in order of focus, uh, my face kept going out of focus, it was very clunky, that lens um, motor is very very noisy as well look for video yeah not so good So after testing both lenses from a video perspective, I was quite keen to get back into taking still photos, but I wanted to try again uh, moving subjects to see how the lenses coped. So outside down to the bay, let's take some photos of some seagulls. Now, of course, a 50 millimeter focal length is not really suited for photographing wildlife and in this case seagulls, but I thought it'd be fun to put it to the test anyhow. Now, it has to be said, the young Neuro lens did struggle to focus on a moving subject, the focus being quite slow and quite clunky. However, I did get one nice shot. The Canon's STM motor not only was quiet, but it did focus very well on the moving subject, taking full advantage of Canon's AI servo mode. Now my next opportunity to put the lenses to the test was during one of my photography workshops here in Brisbane. The subject, a water dragon, which is a lizard that's native to Eastern Australia. They're all over the place. I love them, they make great subjects, but let's see how the lenses performed. Now at first glance, this image looks pretty good, but once again, when we zoom in, sadly the image is out of focus, despite the camera giving me the impression that it was in focus. Uh, this happened several times, but eventually, Perseverance paid off and I did get a nice image out of the Yon Euro at f2.8. And switching the lens for the Canon, the same aperture f2.8, I only needed to take one shot. The Canon nailed it in one go. So now I want to share my thoughts on the Yon Euro lens and how it performed against the Canon 50mm lens. Now I've owned the Canon 50mm lens for quite some time now, it gets a lot of use, I think it's a pretty good lens. Um, the Young Neuro lens I brought specifically to test it out and do this video. Why? Well it's the lens I get asked about the most. Typically, should I buy the Young Neuro lens? Should I buy the Canon? Is it any good? Well. This, uh, this video was an opportunity to put this to the test. Um, Price-wise, $100 I paid for this. Currently here in Australia, this retails for almost twice as much, about $190 to $200. So, the Young Neuro lens, is it any good? The Young Neuro lens with its aperture f1.8 wide open, I could not get a single sharp image out of this lens. I tried, but it just didn't happen. Closing the aperture down, a nice sweet spot, about 2.5 to 2.8, which is still nice and wide, making it a usable lens. Um, the Canon lens, f1.8, again, wide open, much the same. I found the Canon lens as well, it's very soft when it's wide open. So really, both lenses didn't perform well at their maximum aperture to get a nice shallow depth of field, still have a wide aperture, 2.5 to 2.8, for me, 
worked about right. Now in terms of focusing, this is the biggest difference between these two lenses. The focus motor inside the Young um, Nuo lens is absolutely appalling. Um, really slow, really sluggish, really clunky, and as I mentioned before, really, really noisy, making it pretty much useless for video. Um, the Canon lens, by comparison, the STM motor, STM standing for step-in motor, is super quiet, super quick, and it did a really, really great job. So to wrap up this video, the Yongnuo 50mm f1.8 prime lens is sadly not a great lens, but equally it's not a total waste of money. If you want to do video, yeah, I think forget it. The Canon lens is head and shoulders above it. If you want to take photos of moving subjects, you're going to struggle with this lens. The Canon, once again, with its really fast motor, is going to do a much better job. But if you want an affordable way to dip your toe into the world of prime lenses and you've not got a budget for this lens, then go for it because it is a fun lens and you can get sharp photos with it. It's just a little bit hit and miss. I'd love to know, have you got a Young Euro lens? How did you go with it? Do you get good photos? Are your photos not any good? Let me know. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel, and don't forget you can comment, leave suggestions, questions down below the video. I hope to see you sometime again soon. See ya.